Last minute touch ups, Raj? <laughs> well, I think we'll be doing last minute touch ups all the way across, or at least for the first couple of weeks. Where have you been? I've been looking out at the Atlantic Ocean from the vantage point of dry land. <laughs> what did you feel? I felt ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're under your command. Well, not until we get out there. Okay. You're getting us out of here, right, little man? Right. All right. Betsy, we're just going to pull up above the landing spot and cut her loose. Let the current take her in. What's up, Demaris? Say something. I'm leaving. So are you. I'm leaving on a jet boat. <laughs> when we get past this ball, cut into shore, and we'll cut Marissa loose. Take us out in the channel, Ed. Betsy, say something. Come on, say something. Why don't you turn on the radio, Beth, and just listen. Yeah, good afternoon, Captain. Channel 1-2, Channel 1-2. Channel 1-2, this is the vessel that was overflown by the Coast Guard. And, uh, good afternoon, Captain. This is Coast Guard Aircraft. Can I please get the name of your vessel? The name of the vessel is Son of Town Hall. It is, they think that we're a Vietnamese uh, fishing boat. <laughs> the Coast Guard's gone. Betsy figures they were just on patrol and came across us. They don't know anything about us. So they asked us questions because they saw a weird boat. Now they're out of here. Let's hope they don't talk to the other Coast Guard guys. <laughs> the ones who know us. The ones who know us, yeah. the light and on my way back to bed some phantom comes to dare me to try and get to sleep tonight all alone in this house I talk with myself and the echo Talks back, taunting me. Just a ghost of a chance is all that's left of love, and that ghost keeps on haunting me. But now I know that it's time. I swept these cobwebs from my mind Try to leave these old blues behind It's 
hard to talk about my fears, David. It's blocking so much of what I can do right now. It's blocking thought, it's blocking action. And it just produces a big fear, a big depression. Trust that I can't handle it, that I can't. That I can't find the willpower to take me through this. I'm afraid about what can happen to the boat, but I'm mainly afraid about about me, about me not having the strength to do this. About me having to hide under the covers of my room all the way across and not have any energy. Raj, of course it's, it's, it's scary. It is scary to go across the ocean in a raft, an untried raft. But you three don't... We're afraid, Don't Raj. show it to this level, don't... Don't show it at any level, except intellectually. I'm showing it, I'm ex My emotional level is so full of it that it overwhelms the other level. Yeah, but see, you've never been allowed yourself to feel fear before. This is your opportunity. Always before you, you neutralized it. You're Mr. Neutralize, Mr. Neutral. Now you actually feel things. Use this. Stay with it. Face of the whole ocean. <laughs> I can't even face this part just off a of base. Knowing that we're in... Radio distance of either Nova Scotia or Maine. Or Cape Cod. Or New York. We're only, we're only about 75 or 80 miles off the coast, Raj. I know. From this way at 70 miles, how am I going to be at 1,500? In the middle. I do have to have some level of security. <laughs> well, the security is your wrath and your friends. Well, it's uh, kind of a good circulation there. How do we know you're going to succeed? Because you've Because you got no choice. <laughs> what are you going to do? Swim back to shore? You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. What are you up to now? I'm going to do a exercise Ed gave me. Just standing up on the roof. Which is the swaying as part of the boat. Hold my balance. Look at the horizon. Try to get more of a feel for what the boat's doing. If you wreck my plan, I'm going to get you. I know. I'll try to fall off the boat to that side. With okay. Masters. Okay. What do you call that plant you want me to be careful of? We call that plant Roger. Yeah? It may be dead, but it's going to Europe. <laughs> Just close the windows in the bow. Okay. We're going to be sailing, but I'd like all everything closed. No, I mean, just, no, just set up like they are. You know, so that if we if we if we lay over.
Passed through us now, it's cutting down. Thing, Raj. I thought that was great fun. That's the best way to experience it. The vessel handled really well. Sure did. She hung right in those in that seaway man and didn't didn't broach at all. Just a little girl to fall in love with us. Who? You and me, Doc. Well, she don't have to wave her hair or dress in them fancy clothes. And I wouldn't even care. If she didn't wear silk and hose, I want a little girl to love a lot. I would give anything that I've got. I said, just a little girl to fall in love with. Oh my God! I'm going to use these as a point of transformation and completely cleanse my surroundings. Thank you. You're welcome, David. I realize that I've become a total degenerate in my living habits. I mean, just total mold on the heater, growth coming out of every pore of the. But I'll tell you. To launch this from where it was launched and to hold on when the will to say hold on was gone, to go against the harbor masters that ridicule this vessel, the, uh, the police that came to drive it off of public property, the financing of it, it drove me to my deepest, deepest despair. 
from going to begin to repair myself emotionally and physically and spiritually. We've done this this task of taking this wood from the streets of New York and setting it in motion. We'll either get there or we won't. I never learned to think. I never learned to answer questions. I never learned to keep your balance. Keep my balance. <laughs> I never learned how to use my brain. There was no one there asking me any questions. It wasn't until I came to the group that they started asking me questions and they started saying, what would you like to do? Uh, how do you feel? I had always known that these were the right questions to be asked, but no one had done it, you see? And that was, that was such an important thing that I had, to, I had to learn. It was a new process of learning. It was a new, it was a, it was a, a, a new steps that I had to take. And I always, I found it for a long time. It was very hard, very hard to, very hard to do it. And then eventually I started doing it to myself. And at that point, I had overcome what they had tried not to teach me as a kid. Tried not to give I started asking questions of myself. I started asking questions of other people. I started evaluating it. I started describing it. I started comparing it. But I had to start doing it. That was the thing. Just to do it. It's like if you don't learn the notes of a flute, you can't play it. You can look at the flute and go, wow, I'd like to really play this. But if you don't try the notes, then you can't play it. And eventually you learn one note, you learn another, you get, you get the instrument, you learn the scales. Okay, my life has come down to two, two phases. That's my life, my liberation, and my spiritual world. And then there's the theater, the presentation of, of the seven levels, of the triads, three types of timing. And when the person uses these tools and they start to become them, not a Catholic, not a Mormon, but them, whatever they're going to become, it's exciting stuff, and that's really exciting stuff, to see a person become what they could become, with their own volition, their own momentum, their own desire. Not a Hindu, not a Muslim, they manifest. That's uh that's great song.
never seen so much calm on the ocean. Uh, I traveled down the coast of the ocean for five months last year. And I never had a calm day in the whole coast. But out here, you'd think there'd be some wind. But it, in two weeks, we've had at least seven days of the calmed weather. And then the other days, all the, cal all the weather was in the wrong direction. Um, I think there's a new psychology to be written. How to raft across the ocean and deal with the dead calms. Until my dreams Atlantic voyage in our raft and we had food for 60 days but the doldrums there was no wind and we were driven back for about 14 days finally a storm drove us up on the Grand Banks we were out of the Gulf Stream reach and we had only enough fuel for maybe 20 or 30 miles if that so we sent out a message to a container boat to ask the Coast Guard if they could get a fishing boat to tow us into uh, Newfoundland for money. We were willing to pay. Not millions, of course, which, but you know, a nominal fee to be towed in. We stated that we were not under duress. We, we stated to the uh, container boat, the Atlantic Companion, that we were not under duress. Nobody was in, in jeopardy, but we wanted to end the voyage now because we didn't have enough food to get across the Atlantic. We'd run out of enough supplies. So the Coast Guard sent out uh, the Cape Roger and picked us up. You can see why people are scared of death and take us in tow and think about anybody being on here. There's no way being on this boat that you get the sensation that you get looking at it from the outside. Safe. You look at it from the outside, it, it looks it. scary. We've yeah. been following this ship for the last two days. <laughs> it seems to be leading us right to land. Yeah. But we're pleased, and we thank the, the Coast Guard. Uh, it probably saved us a lot of problems out there with no food. Over. Uh, do you read over? Roger, sir. I understand. Uh, I understand that. Thanks for that. Over. Land ho, Roger. Coming into Newfoundland, my favorite province. It's going to be so good while we do some progress here on the boat and getting it ready for next year. That must be a newfound land. That's a newfound land. <laughs> Tidy, huh? Yeah, it is. You always get that feeling. That like a double feeling when you make a landfall. One is a sense of relief and excitement to see land, and then there's a disappointment of the trip being over. You get both of them at once, always. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, David has command of the vessel. We're entering the harbor. Our ocean voyage is over. All right. Thanks for being a great crew.
little simp. Uh, it's a sin? Yes, it's a model sin. A model, a model. I worked for the Coast Guard in America for 20 years. Uh -huh. And they never gave permission to go on the land. Uh, I'm going to find out when I go home. Okay, let, can I ask you something? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, would you rather they spend money on an insane asylum and have the four of us locked up, or would you rather have us towed in once in a while? I'd, I'd rather see you locked up. Okay. In, 19, in 1947, America was the richest country in the world. The average worker was getting a dollar an hour. He paid 10 cents in tax. He paid 25 cents in rent and 25 cents for food. He had 40 cents left over for himself. Unbelievable. But he was greedy. He said, I want more money. So he got a 10% raise. And everybody got a 10% raise. And all prices went up 10%. But the government got, instead of 10 cents, they got 11 cents. So he lost. Instead of having 40 cents out of every dollar, he had 39 cents. So he got another 10% raise. And when he got the other 10% raise, the money in the bank became less, worth less than 10%. It dropped 10%. The more raises he got, the less he came out with. He has raised himself now into $80,000 a year, and he has no money. He goes $5,000 a year into debt. Do not leave Newfoundland. Do not go for a raise. Go for a reduction in wages. Go to your union and say, I want a reduction in wages. Everything is reduced, and you will profit and benefit beyond the wildest imagination. But if you go for more money, you're going to wind up in the hands of the banks, in the hands of the real estate people, and the, and the loan offices. But we're already there. You, but you can, reverse, there. you can reverse it by going for less money. Don't go for wages. Don't go for any increase. Because the government gets the increase. It's the government that gets the power, the bureaucrats. Okay. Pink red? Oh my god, I can't believe it. It's just there too? Oh wow, I can't wait to talk to her. <laughs> it feels so good. Everybody here is high because the boat did everything we wanted to do. It was perfect. And even in big, heavy weather, it was so great. And the only reason that we decided to come in was because we just hadn't gotten far enough and the year was getting late already. You know, so it's just like we weren't going to make it with the winds we were getting. So we got a tow in from the Coast Guard. Boy, that was fun. <laughs> These guys are so friendly, so respectful, and so confident. It's just incredible. And everybody here is really great. Um, I'm planning on coming down. I'm going to start down in a couple of days. My life is where I want it to be right now. I have started the North Atlantic Crossing. I'm going to complete next year. I have faced the fears that were in front of me that I knew of and a hell of a lot more that I didn't know of. Because I face those fears, I've come on through this situation where I can say what I want for my future. I've said what I wanted and Donna's going to join me in it. And that takes my position a thousand times better than what it has been, much as I love you too. So I'm gonna take off after we do some more work here in the boat with Donna, maybe with Esther, and we're gonna do some traveling somewhere, doing something to finance ourselves somehow for the next while. It's going to be glorious whatever you do. I just thought, you know, why couldn't you take a raft and go all the way around the world with it? You never know where you're going to find a piece of castaway material. And we gathered plywood and debris from garbage cans and construction sites. We've done this, this task of taking this wood from the streets of New York and setting it in motion. Okay guys, we're 65 miles from Seguin Island and only 2,711 miles from the mouth of the Loire River. We're France. practically there. For the crossing of the Atlantic, we had four crew on board. Papa Neutrino, who was the primary designer of the raft. Myself, I was the navigator. 121 miles to Vermeuse. 121, we were 126 yesterday. And then we had Ed Gary. What was that now? Ford. Ed had made a five-year trip by bicycle 
In the summer, he'd go north. In the winter, he'd go south. And he just did for five years. There was always a longer distance to ride today than yesterday. Always there was a record in front of me to be broken. There was always this tease for me to move towards. So I would be lying to you guys if I was to let you think that I didn't do this because there were records involved. You know, the record of being the first to cross the Atlantic. Uh, the record in a raft. In a raft, right. The record to have sailed, sailed a piece of junk. And uh, Roger Doncaster. Most exhilarating day yet. Roger had no experience sailing whatsoever. Say something deep, Roger. I'm glad I'm in command of this. And I'm not scared shitless. Well, the first time we saw an iceberg, it was like, wow. You know, we didn't have any danger of, of sinking the way the Titanic did, you know, from getting scraped. But if we got too close to an iceberg, there was a the fear that it could roll on us. This is a big danger with icebergs, is that if you get too close, they do roll. As they melt underneath, they change shape, and they'll just topple completely over, and it could fall on top of you. Well, we did come across one really big iceberg. The strange thing about it was that it seemed to be traveling more or less in the same speed and direction that we were. It stayed with us for over 24 hours. And we were moving, you know, we were checking our position and we were, and it was going right with us. After about three or four weeks, and from the north, the emotional life was becoming in contact with the reality of the crossing. The laundry day. It was slow. It shows three different rain squalls around us. It was dangerous. Uh, one is off our port bow, one is uh, a little behind our starboard beam, and one is now behind our starboard quarter. How high was that big one that knocked us to the side? 20 footer? Calm down. The first big storm that we had, we started seeing 20 foot waves. I admit that I was totally terrified that, that you know, we, there's some limit. I was thinking there is some limit to what this vessel will still behave itself under. I got my whiff shot yesterday. It really set me back. My God, I couldn't believe I was finally spent all this time mounting an expedition into the North Atlantic. I was here. And I was just absolutely stone terrified. Rog, the fog's bad news. Yeah. Especially when the radar's not working. Our dangers were falling overboard, fire, and being run down by a freighter. Came out of the fog out of nowhere and just missed our stern. The ship passed right in front of our bow last night. We didn't pick it up on the radar. Well, you never saw that at all? No. I thought there was one point when you did, when it was off the starboard side. You I can't be there. sure. I can't be sure. Yeah, I always had that a watch. And if you get hit by a ship out there, it's possible they wouldn't know they've hit you. And you're splattering all over the water. Nobody knows. You feel like you never get enough rest, really. Even when you're in your bunk sleeping, you're braced. Your muscles are working constantly. You get used to the motion where you don't lose your balance, but the muscles are always working. I am extremely vulnerable and fragile today. 
What does that mean? What does it mean? It means that's how I feel, fragile and vulnerable. The dolphins would travel with us sometimes for hours at a time, just play. I always felt a tremendous companionship when they were there. It was like, uh, I felt like they could feel me feeling them. If I gave them their regular rations of dog food, I'd have probably less than a week's worth of dog food here with them. 33 days at sea, we ran out of dog food. Getting close, getting close. Ration it down. Running out of supplies. You wouldn't even know it. The thing that we ran out of was the fresh fruit and vegetables, and we really became desperate for those things. Hi, I'm really sorry to interrupt your fishing there. And we were resupplied on three different occasions. <laughs> Yay! It's uh, black currant jam. <laughs> One of your buns to go with the ketchup. It was like Christmas. This is where a 65-year-old man should be. This 65-year-old man. Right here on this vessel for this crew. We've had some beautiful sunsets on this trip. Absolutely stunning sunsets. This is I, every night I go through this like, oh my god, I don't want to take a picture of it. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. At a certain point, you begin to believe that you'll be there forever. You, you just begin to believe this is eternity. Quiet day, no wind, just hanging out here, trying not to go backwards. Hundreds of miles from shore, to no wind. Way too calm. We're out here in this enormous expanse of ocean, hundreds if not thousands of miles in every direction. You can imagine the way some of those explorers must have felt, wondering if they were going to see land again. We had averaged a knot and a half. You're talking about two miles an hour. That's slower than you walk. So it was like walking across the ocean very slowly. We'll get there. Hello, Roger. How far is the coast here? We're only a few miles off. We can see some beautiful islands in front of us. The first land we've seen in a long time. Thank you very much. Why did you, why did you do this? It's like your office. Navigator off duty.
what you will want when moonlight shines in Vermont. But I'd rather be in New Orleans. You'll sing an old Dixie tune, exploring Memphis in June. But I'd rather be in New Orleans. And when I journey to heaven to ponder. 